Welcome to this War Games Delivered painting tutorial for Bolt Action Band of Brothers. I'll be showing you how to paint a late war German Grenadier wearing a Zeltbahn using the War Games Delivered Mega Paint Set. So sit back and get ready to follow along. So to get started on this German Grenadier who is wearing his Zeltbahn, which is the camouflage we've got there, we firstly primed the model using Uniform Grey, which is a great colour to start from and to get the majority of the grey uniform well undercoated and we're going to start off by painting all of the silver metallics and that's because I want to tie everything together uh, with the same kind of shade so the color I'm using of this is gunmetal and I'm just going to paint this over all of the areas where we've got that silver metallic so just take your time with this it doesn't matter if you make a mistake but the, the more careful you are the less time it takes you to go back in uh, and correct things later on so get all that done. If you're not sure 100%, then you can check the box art and then come back and we will move on to some of the leather straps next. Next up, we're gonna paint a lot of the dark brown leather bits. So we're just looking across the, uh, the belt and the webbing here. The color we're using is oak brown. Now I'm gonna go back in and paint the metallics later because it's just easy to get the base color down now it's not covering fantastically well off the uh, off the bat but what we'll do is we let that dry and then we'll add a second coat of that oak brown and then once that's dry we'll uh, we'll do the first of our shades uh, to get everything to start pulling together on the model we'll also paint the boots with the oak brown uh, just taking them up to the, the sock level there. And again, we'll pop the first coat on, let it dry, and then we'll come back uh, and add a second, and that'll give us a nice, uh, nice deep brown color. So I'm putting it on a little bit thick, but then what I'm doing is I'm spreading it out across the boot, and that then helps me keep the detail uh, in the sculpt. So once you're happy with that, we'll uh, we'll do the shading next. One thing I will say is if you made any mistakes, like I made a little bit there with some silver, just correct it with some uh, uniform grey if you need to, uh, and then we'll do the shading. So to shade the mini, we're going to use some dark tone, and we're going to pop this over all the areas that we've just painted, as well as the grey parts of the uniform. Now, the Zelf Barn is quite large on this model, so it's really only the sleeves, the legs, uh, the boots, the helmet and obviously all the metallics as well as the, the leather. Try not to get it on the self bun. If you do, it's not the end of the world because we can just go in and tidy it up later. But obviously the more care you take, the less time it will take you to finish that. So get all that done. Uh, and then when we come back, we will start highlighting the uniform. Once that shade is dry, we'll highlight the uniform. So the color we'll use is uniform gray. What we're looking to do is just catch the raised areas, leaving that darker colour in the, the kind of the recesses and the folds of the fabric. Now, the shade has left the miniature quite shiny, but that's okay. Uh, we'll dull it all down once we've finished, because we've got a bit of work left to do to get this finished. So we'll we'll do the uh, the dull dulling down once we're happy and we've finished uh, the rest of the model. So you can see there. It's fairly easy and straightforward. If you need to put a second coat on, then just take your time. Let the first one dry and then go back in. Nice and easy, nice and simple. And then once that's finished, we'll highlight all the leather next. We'll add another highlight just to those most exposed, uh, almost raised edges. And the color we're gonna use for this is ash gray. You can see it's a brighter color than the uniform gray, but it'll blend in as it uh, as it dries. And what we're looking to do is just catch in the most uppermost raised folds just to add interest to the model so when you're looking down at the tabletop it'll it'll pop out a little bit. So that's a nice easy way to get that done and we'll highlight all the leather next. To highlight the leather we will use uh, leather brown very similar way to how we used uh, the ash grey and we're looking to just highlight along the kind of top edges it's nice and simple so you get a nice uh, a nice easy highlight there 
Uh, we want to paint the boots as well. So again, taking your time. And again, I'm where we've got a big area like that, you can see it doesn't cover very well. So we'll just let that dry. And then once it's dry, we can very simply go in with another coat of uh, leather brown and and just cover over that so it's, uh, it covers nicely. So get that down all the leather. So we've got the gun strap as well around the belt. Uh, and then once we've got all that done, we'll do the magazine pouches um, before we uh, do the stock and the face. And we'll do the uh, Zeltban uh, last. To paint up these uh, magazine holders, we're just going to use some army green. So just take your time and, and cover this. You might need two coats, but just work it over there like that, nice and easy. So once that's dry and we've got everything uh, sorted, we'll come back in and we will have a look at shading it before we highlight it up again. So we'll shade these with some military shader, which is a really nice subtle shade. And you can see it really enhances uh, the detail in the model as well, but it's subtle enough that we're not going to need to come back in with the army green as a, as a first highlight, we can go straight to more of an extreme highlight. So get that done, let it dry, and when we come back, we'll add that highlight. Highlighting these magazine pouches is really simple with some necrotic flesh, and because of the shape, we can just move the brush along the shape of the plastic, just catching the edge and giving us a nice crisp highlight. So work your way around the model. I appear to have caught a wet bit there. Uh, which I'll need to go back and just let that dry. But work your way around all these bits, and then when that's done, we'll come back. We'll do the we'll do the socks next. So for the socks, we're going to base these using hemp rope. So just take your time. It's not a fantastic uh, paint in terms of coverage, so we will need more than one coat. But it's nice and straightforward. So get that done. Let it dry. Make sure it's nice and solid in terms of its coverage, and then we'll come back and we will give this a little bit of a shade as well before we. Uh, before we highlight it. Once those socks are dry, we'll shade them and the color we'll use is military shader again. It gives us a nice greeny yellow color so that we can come back in and highlight up. So as you can see, this is a real simple one. Just take your time and work that across so that it goes into those, those recesses that are sculpted on the model. Nice and easy like that, let that dry and we'll highlight it next. To highlight these socks, we're going to use Drake Tooth, but we're going to use it fairly sparingly because it's uh, it's quite a bright colour. So you can see there, I'm just looking for to draw a single line just down the model there, just like that. So it's nice and easy and straightforward. As it dries, it'll kind of blend down more uh, and give you that nice highlight that you're looking for so it's nice and easy and straightforward get that finished and we'll come back and we'll do the stock of the uh, rifle next uh, and then we'll do probably do the officer's face before we uh, move on to some of the more unique parts of this model we'll shade the stock with some sorry paint the stock with some desert yellow now you can see it doesn't cover fantastically well that's just uh, the nature of, of yellow type colours and pigments so we'll just let that dry completely and we'll add another coat to it hopefully that'll do it if not we'll put a third on otherwise we'll uh, we'll just let that dry get done and we'll come and shade it next we'll shade the stock using some strong tone so we'll just work it on and it doesn't matter if we have some uneven uh, distribution because what we'll do once this dries we'll highlight it and we'll put a we'll paint a little bit of a wood grain on there uh, to give a nice uh, a nice wood effect and then once that's done we'll move on to the flesh so on the stock what we're going to do is just take that desert yellow and we're just going to paint some thin lines along that wood now don't worry if it's not covering fantastically well this is just setting up for the uh, for the next highlight. So just make sure you've got a good point on your brush and then 
work those along there so you get a bit of a false green effect we'll just use a little bit of skeleton bone to finish off this wood green so again we're looking for just very thin lines and that gives you a very nice kind of false wood green effect uh, so we move on we'll do all the flesh areas next uh, before we move on to the uh, the grenade the helmet and uh, the zelt barn we'll paint all of the flesh areas using uh, barbarian flesh so as we're kind of well, we've painted a lot of the model it's really important that we're careful around those areas that we have already finished now you will need two coats of this because it's not the thickest paint in the world and the reason i've gone for barbarian flesh is because i want a, a lighter kind of bright skin tone i could have gone for slightly darker uh, but I'm, i think this one suits the model better so just paint that over get a nice solid coat and then when we're done we'll come back we'll give it a shade we'll shade with some flesh wash so as standard just take your time when you come to those parts of the model that you've already finished we're just looking to work it into those recesses and any kind of shadow areas there so nice and simple now once that dries we'll come back in and we'll start to build that brighter color back up nice and easy it's nice and straightforward a highlight again sticking with that barbarian flesh and we're just looking to catch those uh, sharp edges like the cheekbones the nose the lips etc and of course on the hands just looking to trace down the fingers as well leaving that flesh color in the recesses it's nice and simple so get that done and uh, once you've got it all done we'll come back with uh, another highlight for that last highlight we're going to use some corpse pale which again is kind of much brighter than uh, the barbarian flesh but that's okay um, and again just focusing on those kind of most raised areas it's just nose cheekbone kind of fingers as well and as it dries again it'll kind of blend into the model so don't worry about how stark it looks uh, right off the bat so get that done uh, and then when we come back we'll uh, start to paint the zelt barn in the middle uh, before we move on to the grenade and the helmet webbing so we'll start with the zelt barn first so the color we're going to use for this is we're going to go back to drake tough I'm just going to paint this all over the camouflage area. And you can see that the coverage is okay, but it, it probably does need uh, two coats. So just get it all on there. Once again, be really careful around parts we've finished. And then what we'll do is we'll come back in, we'll build up the camouflage colors. And then we will tone it all down together before popping some highlights on there. The other thing I'm going to do whilst I've got the Drake Tooth out is I'm going to just very carefully find a part just on the webbing across the helmet. I'm just going to use the tip of the brush and I'm going to drag it along that webbing. And that will kind of give me the highlight I'm looking for. And of course, we'll tone that all down as well when we uh, do the rest of it before we come back in and pop a little bit of a highlight on there. So once that base coat is finished, you see it's quite bright and not very camouflaged. So what we want to do now is we also want to add some patches of green and brown. So the green we're using is, is goblin green. Um, and again, don't worry, because it will come across as a little bright once we've got that goblin green down. But we will mute it all into together as well to kind of give it more of a camouflage effect if you're not sure about what to paint in the patches then you can just have a little look at uh, some of the box art um, there's a little insert that comes with the box as well which has got some good camouflage pattern ideas on it and we're just looking to add these patches of goblin green across the model and then once we've done that, we'll come back and we'll add some brown patches next before we tie it all together. Got that green done, we'll add the brown in. And the colour we're going to use for this is fur brown, which is a kind of a reddy brown. Uh, and it doesn't cover that well, which is okay. Uh, we just need to take our time when we apply it. Uh, and then once we've got that first coat down, 
uh, we'll put the second coat down so again if you're not entirely sure about what that looks like then you can check uh, check in with the box art and I'm just going to paint it in there and then once you're happy with your brown green and, and lighter colour get it nice and uh, even in terms of the coverage so they're nice blocked opaque colours and then we'll come back and we'll shade it all and we'll see we may not need to do a highlight because we're actually sitting quite bright at the moment so because it's quite bright uh, we want to dull it down as much as we can um, so we'll do that next to shade all of this we're going to go back to the strong tone which is a, a brown shade and we're just going to work that over now there's lots of recesses and folds on the cloth and you can see there there's once we've got it on there it's really starting to kind of dip into there and dull everything down quite nicely don't forget i'm going to do this part of the uh the webbing on the helmet as well so there we are just get that done work around the model with the strong tone try not to let it settle too much that that there's probably too dark so we just want to move it out to move it around it's better to put too little on than too much so once you're happy that you've got all that done uh, let it dry and we're going to come back and we'll see how it looks we may do some little highlights we may just leave it uh, depending on how it all dries so i'm quite happy with how that's come out um with the shade on it. and once we matte varnish it as well it will dull it all down and help tie everything together so the last thing we've got to do on the chap is the grenade that he's throwing and we're going to base that going to go back to uh, hemp rope so uh, oh, a bit too much paint on my brush there so we're just going to very carefully base this make sure we don't go uh, over any of the bits that we've already finished so get that on again we're probably going to need a couple of coats just to make sure that it covers uh, covers nicely and then we'll uh, we'll shade it highlight it matte varnish and base We'll use some strong tone again just to shade that grenade and again we're just going to cover the whole thing nice and easy there we go so let that dry and then we'll see if we need to to highlight it probably just a little bit uh, but we'll come back once that's totally dry highlighted i think we'll pop a little bit of hemp rope onto the grenade and I'm going to do this in a, a very stippling motion so it's not going to be full coats because it just gives the impression that it's a little bit more worn. And then if you want to just make it a little bit more worn again, you just take a little bit of drink scale. And again, we're just kind of dotting over the model there like that. Perfect. So that's the paint job done so we'll matte varnish everything next and then we will base the model so when we're matte varnishing we want to make sure that everything is dry uh, and we also don't want to put this on too thick we want to make sure that we keep it moving uh, across the model and the reason we need to do that is if we have too much in in one area then it can dry with a little bit of a, a little bit of a frosting effect uh, which which we don't want we can just keep moving around the model just like this so there we are just get that done and when we come back we'll see that it's uh, completely matted down it looks really good um, particularly these boots which are really shiny and anywhere where we've really used that um, strong tone which is the, the kind of the black wash we'll see that so we'll do that and we'll we'll base the model next then we're done that matte varnish has tied everything together really nicely so the last but one thing we need to do is to paint the edge of the base so i'm going for elf green which is kind of a, a very nice earthy green dark browny green so paint this all the way around the edge if you need more than one coat then just you know take your time and then once that's done uh, all we've got left to do is, is base it uh, which i'll show you how to do shortly and then we'll have a look at it on the turntable Basing the model is really easy and straightforward. You just pop some PVA glue on there, pop them into some mixed basing materials based on the uh, environment that they're going to be fighting in. And there you go. Nice and simple. 
that's the basin done. Let's have a look at the finished model. And there we have it, this German Grenadier wearing a Zelfan is done and ready for the Bolt Action Battlefield. Make sure you check out our other tutorials so you know how to paint the whole box. And we're also going to be giving away one Band of Brothers set to a lucky winner. You have just two days to enter from the release of this video, so make sure you do so using the link in the description. Remember to check out War Games Delivered for all your wargaming and hobby needs. Our link is below. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.